this afternoon we're going down to Alrighty, so this is Carson Conway, and I am here with Katie Howard interviewing um, uh, Bob Mauer or Clyde Mowry, and he is. We are at his residence in Lucasville, Ohio, on June thirteenth at nine thirty four in the morning, and we are here to discuss his life and uh, his past in Lucasville, and. As a reminder, the interviewee is in complete control of this interview and may stop it at any time. If I ask any questions that you prefer not to answer, just let me know and I'll move on to another question. You'll have the opportunity to review your interview before it is deposited into the archive and you can make edits at that time. This interview will be deposited at three locations at which people will be able to access the full contents of the LAHS Oral History Project, including this interview and any photographs we take during our time with you. Alright, so if you would please state your name for the recording. Very good, Clyde Mallory. And where were you born? I beg pardon? Where were you born? I was born in Chicago, Illinois. Wow, when were you born? Uh, April 30th, 1929. Um, so, you weren't originally from Lucasville. Could you tell us how you ended up here? <laughs> Well, it was a fine community. I was aware of that, and uh, through the years after we were married, and I, I had previously to that been a uh, manager for a corporation, traveled all over the country, and we decided to come back here because my wife uh, was originally from here, and uh, that's the reason we ch chose Lucasville, and there was a nice house. <laughs> <laughs> so, what year did you graduate? Graduated from high school in 1947. What high school? Uh, West, West. It's West now. It was Washington High School at that time. Yeah. So, do you have lots of family here, or were they still originally from Chicago, Illinois? Did they move with you, or did they no, stay there? No, that uh, originally that was. Uh, we were the only one. It was my my father and my mother, and uh, at that time, three children from Chicago. We came from Chicago and uh, moved here and then after that we, my mother had three more children and uh, we resided at that time for the most part in Friendship, Ohio. Uh, obviously West High School, Washington, so it's the west side. Mm -hmm. And uh, grew up there and participated in athletics, all three of them. And uh, uh, following that, uh, got married. <laughs> you know, begin to uh, make a career for myself and uh, in subsequent years about 10 years after that I not being able to do it before that because of the finances uh, attended uh, high university Steubenville College and graduated with, from Purdue University with a business degree so that's pretty much the outline at that time. I was fortunate enough to be chosen by a friend to uh, work with this, this contracting company and as a result of that I became the manager to, uh, for a strategic air command base at Wright-Patterson and I, a couple of uh, locks and dams on the High River, the Greenup Lock and Dam and the New Cumberland Lock and Dam. Mm -hmm and uh, various other projects such as that I managed through the years. Finally, spent 37 years as the manager out at U.S. Chemicals in uh, Haverhill uh, over the, all of the maintenance. So, Could you tell us how your classes were like, like the numbers that you graduated with and how athletics worked and just really elaborate on how your school experience was in high school back then? Uh, how many people I graduated with? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I think about 35. I interviewed someone that graduated with a class of five. Oh, yes. I'm oh, sure yeah. You it, did. Was, it was so weird yeah, I'm to sure think you did. now. Yeah. That's wonderful. Uh, there were a lot of small schools mm -hmm. in the area at that time. And. Uh, yeah, and do you I think it, it was because there were so many schools around and everybody was just so spread out, or 
No, I think it was uh, the, uh, the uh, population was not what it is today. Right. And every one of the schools, uh, including Raritan, Menford, I mean, Raritan, Otway, Northwest, uh, they all had an identity that they wanted to secure. And so they resisted merging mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. I can remember playing uh, basketball at Raritan in a little tiny place that I swear to you, the ceilings wasn't much higher than this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the court was about half of the size of our court. And yet they wanted to participate as a, you know, as a unit. And, yeah. and uh, so, you know, there's some admiration. I have admiration for that, but mm -hmm. subsequently they did join with together and formed Northwest School District. And the same was true for other schools uh, in the area, but uh, especially some of the Kentucky schools were doing the same thing, little tiny schools. Mm -hmm. But most of them resisted merging, other than that group there, Menford uh, stayed separate, we stayed separate, and so forth. Uh, there was an interesting time. <laughs> So how did sports work? Is it like it is now when you play like in a conference or was it like you just yeah. could pick up a game or? No, we played in a conference uh, at that time. It's, uh, well, I, I think it was SOC at that time. I'm not absolutely sure of that. But uh, we, we did play in a conference. Uh, Wheelersburg was our biggest, uh, uh, you know, Still is. Yeah, it still <laughs> is, yeah. Boo. Biggest problem was Wheelersburg <laughs> and, and Menford mm -hmm. at that time. And uh, those were obviously because they had a larger student body and had uh, more, more young people. But, uh, yeah, we held our own. <laughs> yeah. Did you win any championships or? Any what? Any championships? Did you win any? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we won championships. As a matter of fact, I was on a baseball team uh, that finished second in the Class B. That mm -hmm. was what we were rated uh, on uh, in the state. Went to Columbus and played in the state championship for Class B and was beaten in the uh, championship game. So we finished second in the state in the B class. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah, we had good basketball teams. I played basketball. And uh, football, I was on the first football team at West. Really? That's Washington. awesome. And my uh, trophy, or my jacket, uh, or uh, my number 20, mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, is, on, is on the uh, uniform that I wore. And it's in the uh, trophy case at, the, at West right now. That's awesome. That's my dad's basketball number. It was twenty. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, my wife claims that the reason it's on there is I didn't get it dirty. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, I participate in a lot of sports. Play basketball. Baseball. Baseball. Football. football. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, so you said you went to college. I went to yes, I went to various colleges. <laughs> So how has college changed from when you went to like what it is now? Is it pretty similar oh or? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it just, in those days, I, I, it may be so today, but uh, I know that uh, I contribute to my grandchildren's uh, college mm -hmm. now. I didn't have a grandparents to help to do that when we were, and right. we had a large family, we couldn't afford it. And the colleges uh, in those days were not near what they are today. They were very small. Went to Wilmington for some all classes also at the time. Wound up in, uh, after I was an adult at uh, Purdue University and graduated a two-year program there. So. so do you think technology now is a better way for us to get into college and help us with college than the opportunities you had when you were in college? Well, in, in my time as a, coming out of high school, um, the, certainly Scioto County <laughs> yeah. uh, was, was really a poor uh, 
poor county. Mm -hmm. I did not know that because everyone was poor. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, you, there wasn't any sense of uh, not having uh, uh, or being less than anyone else. It's very important. It's very important. Um, youngsters today, uh, I think, have more pressure on them than we did because of the divisions of wealth in the county definitely. and uh, and the circumstances in our homes. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, uh, you know, I've studied that a great deal because I, uh, through the years I've become uh, uh, more associated with, I suppose my age would reflect this, the awareness that uh, I don't have a long, long time to live, okay? Mm -hmm. And so religiously, I began to uh, reflect on that. And that made me, in turn, uh, look at other people's situations to the degree that I've come to understand that even in Lucasville, Ohio, which we think we know, you, you have no idea what goes on in the homes uh, around you. Absolutely. Even. And some children are being mistreated. We do not know that. Some children are, are, are beaten and, and abused. Uh, and and it's, it's a terrible thing to contemplate because, you, you know, we're helpless to do anything about it unless it comes out as a public thing. And so, in that sense, I think it's much more difficult to, uh, for a youngster now. That's the reason the suicide rate is so high. As a matter of fact, I had sitting on my porch here uh, three or four days ago a lantern that reflects uh, uh, from a young lady, I think she's from Lucasville, that uh, she was chosen as a queen or something. Miss Riverdays. Huh? Miss Riverdays? Yeah, Miss Riverdays. Yep. And she wanted donations for uh, suicide watch. Mm -hmm. And, you know, gosh, naturally you're going to support that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's, it's, I, have a, I have a young lady uh, in the eighth grade, who's, who, a granddaughter, who sets and says she's concerned about suicide. That's very frightening. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, so I think if I might continue on that rhythm there, uh, all of the uh, media, uh, phones, telephones, Facebook, all of this stuff, puts tremendous pressure on young people mm -hmm. uh, in that it's more a person can pick up a, face, uh, a phone now and make an insinuating comment to a young person. Uh, you know, where in, that, in our day, if you had a telephone, and mom didn't let you use it. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so now everybody carries one around and they make uh, foolish comments about their friends, so-called friends. Yeah, and so those are the dangers I see in today's society. Yeah. Um, let's get back. Could you tell us um, how many children you have, grandchildren? Talk about them and tell us who they are. Very good. Very good. I have, uh, we have six children. Oh, wow. And all of them are successful. Three boys, three girls. Uh, our oldest girl uh, is music director, was a music director at South Webster in Wheelersburg, Mrs. Clymer. Mm -hmm. uh, now Mrs. Clymer, Becky Clymer. Uh, our son, Steve Mowry, is uh, judge of Soda County. Yes. And, uh, he was my judge when um, I did mock trial there. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. And... Uh, our, our next son, uh, next child was a son, and he's uh, in charge of uh, a company over South America. And he travels South America, and they live in Florida. Uh, our next uh, child was a, a daughter, and she's an attorney, and her and her husband both have a firm in uh, Cincinnati. Our next... Uh, child was another girl and that's uh, Connie who's uh, 
Boldman, Connie Boldman now. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course they own these uh, things, that the car washes and yep. all the stuff around it. And uh, our last son is Phil, mm -hmm. Phil Mauer. And uh, he's uh, over out at uh, the same plant that I was manager of. He came to work for me and has stayed there for the past 25 years. And uh, ironically, I sent him off to college mm -hmm. and uh, we got the first transcript back in the mail and I opened it excited, you know, to his first one. And he took 20 uh, hours mm -hmm. and he, they didn't get, he didn't get any credit. And I said, how, you know, this must be a mistake. Yeah. He said, no, Dad, he said, I actually didn't attend the classes. <laughs> he said, I just, uh, you know, I went in the rec room and I, I said, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. And uh, so he said, well, you know, I just don't want to go. And I said, okay, how'd you like to go to work for me? And uh, so I put him to work out at the plant. And he turned out to be a wonderful, wonderful worker. Yeah. Crazy how things work now. <laughs> um, so, if you would explain why you came back to Lucasville, why this was such a good community, you feel like to come back. And did you raise your kids here? Pardon? Did you raise your kids here in Lucasville? Yes. Yes. We why? Did. Why did you feel like that was a good idea? Well, again, uh, uh, my wife's parents again were yeah. in the locality, and uh, we. Well, we found a home that we thought was pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Not this one, another one. Uh, out Lucasville Mentor Lucasville Mentor Is Grove. it still standing today? Pardon? Is the house still standing? It's still standing. It's in disrepair. Whoever got it through the years <clears throat> didn't take care of it. That was yeah. 40 years ago. But uh, yeah, it's still standing. Uh, I drove up to it the other day and it was sad. Yeah. Because, you know, when you you have a history there, mm -hmm. kids have been raised there. But, yeah, uh, Lucasville, uh, all of the people that John mentioned, you're interviewing? Yes. I know. Mm -hmm. And I was on the school board for 16 years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, had a lot of association with the school at that time and enjoyed it very much. And... Uh, uh, to me, uh, as uh, as has been said before, it takes a village to raise children, and it certainly does. You never know when a child walks out of here and goes to play with so and so and so and so. You think you know that what's going on? You don't know what's going on because, and that requires the parents of the people who are watching this activity. Mm -hmm. To participate in it, you know, if it gets to be too rowdy, whatever, whatever, to to enter into it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so it takes a village to raise children, and I think uh, Lucasville became ideal to us in that sense. So you feel like the people here really helped benefit you raising your kids here and living here is for the best. Yes. Yes. Um. Let's talk about the history of Lucasville when you raised your kids here. What kind of restaurants were around? What kind of what? Restaurants. Oh, restaurants. <laughs> well, uh, in, in my time when I was growing up, uh, <clears throat> I can only remember there wasn't any fast food restaurants. Nothing really? like that. None. <laughs> and uh, they finally, Newberry's, uh, which is a New Boston family mm -hmm. name, opened a little drive-in place yeah and ironically because everybody flocked there <laughs> that was uh, virtually the first time that I ever saw my wife and she was on a date <laughs> and, you know parked with and in at Newberry's yeah and uh, so I know I knew the guy that uh, it was a a double date actually I knew the guy who was driving the car mm -hmm. and him and his girlfriend and my wife and her boyfriend was in the back seat and I went over to talk to the to the guy that I knew mm -hmm. and she I saw this very pretty girl in there <laughs> <laughs> they introduced us and uh, 
then I found out she worked down at Kresge's. Uh, what was Kresge's? Portsmouth. Kresge's uh, five and ten cent store down at mm. uh, downtown. And so uh, I began to spend a lot of time down there. <laughs> <laughs> And that's yeah, that's how I met her. There were there were no places. Uh, there just weren't any rest, restaurants of that sort. You know, there just just wasn't. People did not have the money, I think. Yeah. To participate in that way. And uh, I'm not sure that's a bad thing. Again, mm -hmm. we lived a kind of a cloistered existence. We really did. And uh, the doors were never locked on our homes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, that's amazing to say that because today, that's the last thing I do at night is make sure that everything's secure here. Yeah. And I, I really regret to say that. That's yep. not a good thing. Yeah. Uh, were there any grocery stores in Lucasville? Like, what did you do for your groceries? I don't hear too good. What did you do for your groceries? Oh, in those days or yeah. now? In those days. In those days? Well, there, in those days, there were little stores around. <laughs> yeah. You know? Now Kroger's. Uh, no Kroger's <laughs> around here? No Kroger's. No, <laughs> there weren't any Kroger's. Uh, there was a, uh, a company called Schaefer's. Mm -hmm. And they had uh, two or three uh, of what you might call larger stores. But everybody shopped at a little grocery store in their community. That uh, you know, in those days, they they had like if uh, cookies weren't packaged. Yeah. You know, they had little bins, and the cookies were in there. And uh, you know, if you wanted a cookie, you go get it. And you, if you want ten, you they put them in a bag. Mm -hmm. uh, it was. Uh, not, uh, it wasn't very sophisticated. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, you never knew who had been in the cookie. <laughs> <thing before. laughs> yeah. But you didn't care. <laughs> so what were your forms of transportation? My form of transportation, my father had a truck. Mm -hmm. uh, we weren't allowed, of course, you know, we were too young at that time. Before we got ma I got married at 20, so... By that time, I had a little car. Mm -hmm. I'd been working, and I worked. Uh, I, w I went to work of an evening, first, first at first, for uh, cleaning up and stuff like that at the mm -hmm. drugstore in town. And uh, so our transportation pretty much was Dad's truck. So. At what age did you get your license? Has it always been sixteen? Yeah, at that uh, at that time you could you could actually drive at sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's still the same. I, is it still the same? Yeah, it's still the same with the sixteen okay. age then, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, what do you think is the biggest change that you've seen in Lucasville over the years? Well, I don't know. I the guess last, downtown. The last Last down, I'd have to say downtown. It's almost like yeah. uh, everything's gone that I remembered. You know when I uh, when I was coming through here and working. Uh, so I can remember during the A plant days when they built the A plant. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a my gosh, it was bustling. There were restaurants open everywhere. There used to be a car dealership down in Lucasville. Oh really? Oh yeah. And uh, I mean. A, new car dealership mm -hmm. and so uh, there were restaurants all through Lucasville uh, now even though I love the road the street we have now downtown mm -hmm. uh, there aren't very many businesses mm -hmm. you know and I hopefully they'll fill that in yeah um was the Scioto County Fair a big deal, like such a big deal as it is today? Is it as big as it was then? It was, or? It was huge. <laughs> <laughs> it was huge. Do you think it was a bigger deal then, or do you still think it's about the same? 
the Soda County Fair? Yeah. Do you think it was a bigger deal back then oh, or now? Bigger. It, I think it's a bigger deal. Of course, I don't go over, out there as much now, mm-hmm. but I can remember running around there as a youngster. Yeah. Chasing girls, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was, oh, if you didn't go to Soda County Fair, you you know. What was wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, I don't know if that's true for youngsters today. I have went out and walked around and looked at the buildings and stuff, you know, in there. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty uh, heavy into genealogy. Mm-hmm. So they have, uh, they have some pictures out there that I requested and received from the bo- fair board, some old pictures. And, you know, and so I... I I like to do that, so I, I go out there about every year once, t- mm-hmm. one day, mm-hmm. but uh, in my youth, we went out every day. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> every day. Um, did you ever have any, like, livestock there for, like, the 4-H animals? Did you ever do those? No, I didn't. Uh, there again, uh, we, we, uh, we weren't uh, well enough. If we had uh, some livestock, we ate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So were you into farming onto your house when you were little, growing no, up? It was, no, it was small. I, I worked on farmers, uh, out place, you know, as a, mm-hmm. as a youngster, bailing hay and stuff like that. I remember one time, and you're, this is so ridiculous because people can't believe it in today's economy. <laughs> I worked all day for 50 cents oh, bailing wow. hay. Oh, and we were we were coming home, and they gave me fifty cent piece, and we were, we were my friend and I, we were in like sophomores or juniors, mm-hmm. and I had uh, the fifty cents in my hand, and he and I was going to jump across the, this creek about this far, you know, mm-hmm. was out in the boonies, <laughs> and uh, when I jumped, the fifty cent piece fell out <laughs> down in the creek, and we couldn't find it. Oh my gosh! I spent all day, all day, and uh, it, it was it was a different time. Fifty cents for all day. Yeah. I mean, bail and hay. So, what did you guys do for fun? For fun? Mm-hmm. Well, in the summer, we swam in the, in the creek. Mm-hmm. We had our favorite place, and uh, mostly in those days. Uh, uh, I don't remember. The girls didn't uh, come down to the creek and swim with us. It was just a boy thing. And the girls would c- come down and yell, yell, you know. Mm-hmm. And we would <coughs> jump out of the water and run after them. But they never did come down to swim. Was it like a neighborhood creek it, that everybody went to? It was a neighborhood to? creek. Yeah, yeah, it was in, run, in a grove mm-hmm. down at Princeton. And uh, then play baseball. I played baseball uh, from the time I was able to, you know, afford a glove, and and, yeah. and I played sports. We we uh, I was fast. I was very fast I, because I ran all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, as I just finished ten years ago. I ran ten uh, k's till I was eighty years old. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I have some trophies in there um, on winning for my age group, you mm-hmm. know. There aren't very many 80-year-olds running 10Ks mm-hmm. at yeah. six points five, some miles, you know. So, yeah, I've always been, I always felt that way. Um, has it ever bothered you how close of a community this is, like, with people knowing your business? Do you ever feel like that has been an issue? Not at all. They, you know, the thing about people, I don't know, I, I, that gives me opportunity to say this. Go for it. <laughs> You're, you have the spotlight. Anything okay, yeah. anything you want to say. Okay, I, I want to say about people, and this is, uh, I don't mean this is a really, truly an absolute religious thing, mm-hmm. but if you believe in God, then you have to believe that God loves everybody he creates Mm -hmm. and everybody he creates therefore is a son or a daughter of God Mm -hmm. okay now if even though I may not like the guy 
but that's not true. I don't dislike anybody here, but it, <laughs> I may not like the guy across the street, okay? Right. He may have even done things that I thought he shouldn't have done to me, you know, or said things about me. Mm -hmm. He's still my brother. Yeah. And, uh, the, and in the case of the lady, he's still my sister. Yep. So, you know, perhaps it's a trait of growing older. You begin to realize that you don't, uh, you're, we're very quick to judge. Absolutely. And very quick to speak on something that we don't know anything about. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you say, why does a person commit uh, foolish or criminal acts? Yeah. And you have to, you know, you know, they're no good. Well, the child of God, mm -hmm. somewhere along the way, for whatever reason, they were faced with situations that drove them to be like they are. Mm -hmm. You can't judge them because you don't know. Best thing to do is lament what they are, and uh, <clears throat> regret that they are, and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. But be careful who you judge. <clears throat> you know, just take a positive feeling, just as you and you, take a positive feeling and, and never give up about yourself. I can remember times uh, when I thought, oh my gosh, I don't think I can go on with this. You know, I was taken uh, figuratively a beating, you know, and uh, from people about this or that. And, uh, and then I decided, well, they don't know me. They do not know me. They do not what the drive inside of me. I will not quit. And that son that's a judge, uh, I can remember at the kitchen table, mm -hmm. I remember him saying, uh, oh, Dad, I think I've decided I'll be a pres the president. I said, well, that's a lofty goal, you know. <laughs> but I said, I'll tell you this. You strive to be all that you can be, and you never quit, and you'll be so proud of what you attain, whether it's a president or not. Mm -hmm. You'll be proud of what you attain because you can't fail. If you won't quit, you can't fail. Right. Even though the world may be beating you down, just, you know, you have to step aside and go on, and uh, you, you know, and that's true for your relationship with with your husbands, you know, the wives. You know, you may not you may not like it, but it's not the end of the world. It's just a day in your life. Absolutely. Okay. So, what made you move to this home right here? What what? What made you move to this home? Oh, this here? home. I had it built. Oh, really? Yeah, it was a vacant lot. I love your gazebo out there. Well, I like it. <laughs> it's Amish. That's Amish. Everybody talks about it when we drive by. And yeah. My family from Texas that comes in, they go through here to go to my grandma's house on Lucasville, Memphis, every time. Oh, I just love that gazebo. Yeah. <laughs> I love the gazebo. It's an Amish. Uh, I bought that, and, and I actually assembled it, as a matter of fact. Yeah. And, I had, and when I began, uh, I had a... Uh, as a matter of fact, it's out on the back now. I have this huge uh, golfer, mm -hmm. and I used to have him. Oh in, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and I used to have him in there, and uh, now obviously he's sitting out back with a high state hat on. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you'd like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, why did we choose it? It was a, it was ideal location. We wanted to stay in this community, so we built here and and. Uh, I would tell you, I think it's one of the best decisions we ever made in our life. I love the home. Mm -hmm. I love the uh, it allows. Me, I love to cut grass. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how many problems I solve on my mower. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I love to cut grass. I love to make it attractive. Mm -hmm. That strip out there between the two roads, mm -hmm. you know, that runs all the way down to the filling station. Yeah. And all the way. At one time, I cut all the way down past Wilson's and kept that clear. Oh, my and I gosh. And I used to cut OSU figures there oh, before yes. you guys were born. Now, and for 45 years, can you believe this? For 45 years, I have cut that strip and kept it cut mode. Wow. And last year 
I had an operation, was in the hospital for 14 days, mm -hmm. and uh, I was laying there and I thought, I'm not going to cut that strip. It beats me up, you know, it's real mm -hmm. irregular. I'm not going to cut that strip this year. And uh, it grew up till it looked like, you know, the weeds were about that big and nobody else was cutting it. So I said, okay, I'm going to cut that strip. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, if there was one memory you could go back and do, or live, or just replay, about your time here in Lucasville, what would it be? Mm, that's a good, that is a very good question. Or you can pick a few. <clears throat> We're here to talk to you. Okay. Say anything you want. Well, it's, yeah, it's a pleasure to have you. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, I don't know. Uh, as a single thing, I guess when uh, I would have to think, uh, I went to state uh, when Gene Tennis played, mm -hmm. and uh, I went to state ball games when they were up in the state, and I was so proud of those kids. <laughs> of course, I knew them. I was on the school board. Yeah. Gene Tennis, uh, I don't know if you knew, he was in special ed. A uh, wonderful ball player, but he wasn't, you know, he never had the opportunity. Tennis family, much like my family when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. And he missed, uh, he got sick and missed some time. And I, I was on the school board at the time. And and they, uh, I, I was new on the school board at that time. Mm -hmm. And the question came before the school board, should we send a tutor or not, and the man, uh, Marine's nameless, who was kind of the head of the school board, said at the time, no, 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 I don't know, there, you know, the tennis is blah, 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 you know, and I, that was one of the first times I stood up in the, I stood up, actually, I said, look, I came from that atmosphere, and that's not going to happen, if we, if he needs a tutor, he gets a tutor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, he got a tutor, <laughs> and uh, he always remembered that because he it got to him. I didn't tell him, but it got to him that I had, and so he and I became fast friends. Matter of fact, I went out to while he was still playing. I went out to uh, San Francisco and uh, watched him play out there, Oakland. Yeah. So do you think sports are positively impacting students? Do you think that's sports a drive? Sports are wonderful, yeah. Do you think that's a drive sports for students? Sports are wonderful. And I'm so pleased about uh, the girls now are having teams and uh, they have an opportunity to, because it, uh, it is a camaraderie in, 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 you know, with having, uh, you get pretty close in sports. Absolutely. Yeah, you do. And, and I think, uh, I think that's all required. I keep telling, my, you know, my two, my grandson, uh, who's a sophomore, Nick, mm -hmm. uh, very quiet, you know, very quiet. And uh, I keep telling him and Grace, uh, my granddaughter, the same thing I told you, you know, today, right here today, you have pretty much a guarantee that this is going to be your day, and you get to spend it doing whatever you're doing. In your, this case, we're doing this. You know, even though you guys are young, and John will agree with this, you don't have any guarantee for tomorrow. You know, I had a I had a uh, guy I played football with uh, that uh, we never dreamed of it, of it but uh, all of a sudden he died of some kind of a a heart problem and we had they had the funeral at the school he was so popular you know mm -hmm. and uh, you know we we could not believe it you know there's no guarantee for tomorrow that's the reason you take today and you don't beat up on your neighbor mm -hmm. and you don't you know you just go about trying to become what you can become mm -hmm. because you're sent here 
remember this, what I t tell you this, regardless of whether it's there, you're sent here for a purpose. Be about your purpose. Don't worry about the rest of it. Just be about your purpose. Okay? All righty, is there anything else you want on the recording that's gonna go down from the archive? Many years you want people to know or pe want people to hear? Anything at all? Well, okay, I, uh, I just want them to know that it was a joy to be here. It was a joy to be here. And uh, I thank you, I thank you, and I thank John very much for including me in it. It's, I don't think of myself as 90. <laughs> I don't think you of You couldn't that. tell me you were 90. <laughs> yeah, Probably. I absolutely do not. I, I walk, uh, yesterday I walked two miles on the track over there. That's awesome. And I wanted to run some, I, of course, running for years. Mm -hmm. And here come uh, a couple of young people and went flying by me, and I, <laughs> I wanted to run so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, and I stopped running uh, 10 years ago when my wife had knee surgery. Mm -hmm. I thought, I better stop running, you know. And I'm 80 years old. But, you know, this is a funny thing. I'll tell you just for the humor of it. Here I am, 80 years old, and my, my son-in-law um, uh, paid for a team to be in the Dale Rice League. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good baseball league downtown mm -hmm. and that, and all the people are in that Del Rice league are like you know 19, 18 20 25 maybe and here I am 80 years old and I'm playing second base <laughs> 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 I, I, I fielded a grounder and threw, him, threw out a 19 year old boy <laughs> at first base and he came over to shake hands with me. <laughs> <laughs> and later in the game, uh, I, I was up three times, and I took a swing on the last time I was batting and, and knocked it over second base and got a single. <laughs> Eighty years old, and it was in the paper. <laughs> that was, uh, like I say, ten years ago. But that's, that's so funny that, uh, to me to be doing that, and I was so proud. You know, just to be, just to be active, just yeah. to keep being active. Well, that's awesome. Alrighty, if there isn't anything else, I think we'll no. stop it there. No, I All thank right. you very much. All right. Did it go off? Nope. Nope. Yeah, it says it's still recording. <laughs>